In this screencast, we're going to talk about continuous functions. So our learning target objective for this screencast says, learners will be able to determine whether a continuous relation is a function given its graph. You've been graphing continuous functions and continuous relations uh, functions really for a long time in math. By the time you're in Algebra 2 class, you started graphing functions probably in middle school. A significant portion of Algebra 1 was involved in graphing this type of function here, a linear function. You spent some time in Algebra 1, I'm certain, making graphs that look like this, quadratic functions. You probably talked in geometry last year about a graph that looks like this, a circle, uh, and so forth. You've actually spent a lot of time in your math career, even in high school already, making the graphs of relations that are continuous. A continuous relation is simply one that is not discrete. In other words, it can't simply be, at least not very well, given as a listing of ordered pairs. Okay, uh, Continuous relations are going to be best described by either their graphs or by some rule that describes all of the ordered pairs in the function. And we'll talk about that when we get to class. So the goal of this screencast is to determine whether these things are functions. And here's a recall from the screencast 3.1. We said a relation is a function if every element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. So I want to run through some of these examples with you here. We'll take these kind of from left to right. Let's look at this linear um, graph right now. What I need to decide is, does every x, you know, does every x have only one y? Essentially, right? This is a, a way of taking this formal language here and applying it to the graph. Does every input value, does every x have only one y? And I thought the, the easiest way to do this might be to just pick some x values. So let's pick negative 3. Negative 3 goes with only this y value, negative 3.5 or so. Let's try 0. When x is 0, y is only negative 1 point something. When x is 2, y is only about 0, it looks like. Can you find any x value on that graph that has more than one y with it? I'll do a couple more quickly here while we're talking. That one's good. That one's good. You know, I think every x has only one y. This is a function. And right now, I can hear some of you screaming at YouTube, <laughs> saying, Mr. Bowman, I already know uh, what, what the shortcut for this is. Yeah, you probably do. Uh, in Algebra 1, even probably in middle school, when you were approached with this topic, you, you were given the, the notation, the, the idea of using what we call the vertical line test. But all that is is really a shortcut. And I guess we should talk for a second about why that works. What you're doing when you draw those vertical lines is you're trying to see if there's anywhere you could draw the line that would cross the graph more than once. In other words, what you're saying is, I'm wanting to see if I can pick an x and come up with a place where my x value has two different y's. Essentially, all you're doing with the vertical line test is you're testing this right here, the definition of, is it a function or not? So if you're familiar with the vertical line test, you probably could work through these pretty quickly. I would say that this second example here uh, pretty clearly is not a function uh, because I can pick an x value. How about x equals 1? Looks like a money dollar sign, doesn't it? Um, but actually, when x is 1, I see three different y values on the graph that we're here. This one is not a function. And neither is the third example. It's a circle. Uh, if you pick an x, uh, we should be clear and say you should pick an x that is a part of the, a part of the relation, right? Uh, like it would be kind of crazy to say let's pick x equals four here, but if you pick uh, x equals negative two, well, if you were to sketch that vertical line through there real quickly, I think you would see that there are two different y values there. 
It's worth pointing out that you can't just test one and see whether or not uh, the relation is a function, right? If I'd started checking x equals 3, I would have said, oh, there's only that one point there. It must be a function. That's a fallacy. This is not a function. Okay, and this last one on the screen, this is uh, probably a quadratic function graph where it looks a lot like it. I think for any x you pick, I'll pick this one, it crosses right there at the x-intercept. I'll pick x equals negative 1. That one only has one y. I think these are all, every vertical line I draw here, every x that I pick is going to only have one y value. It's only going to cross the graph once. That is a function. Okay, it's pause and check time. Pause the video, try to determine whether each graph is a function or not, and then hit play to get some feedback. Okay, let's see how things are going. I'm guessing you probably did pretty well on this. Uh, if I look at A, I see right away an x value, 2 for example, that has two separate y values. y equals 2, y equals about negative 2 point something. This is not a function. Not a function. B is interesting. There are a lot of x values that have the same y value. That actually would make this, and, and this is almost a precursor to one of the things we'll work on when we get to class, that would make this function not one-to-one, -one, but that's not the question here. The question here is, is this graph a function? So can you find an x value that would have more than one y value in the function? This one's okay. Uh, this one's okay also. I know, you know, when you draw a line, it doesn't have like this infinitely small width like lines in mathematics do. Uh, looks like this one point here would be the one that's okay here. Let me try one of these corner points. Yeah. Well, I missed the graph a little bit. I was shooting for this point here. I think that one's okay. You know, I think this is a function. I think that every x value in this graph has only one y. It's a function. This last one's kind of odd because uh, there's only one x value in the graph. x equals about negative 2. And I guess what I hope you'll see is that with the indication of the line both directions, that all of the y values go with x equals 2. This one is super duper duper not a function. The only x in, the, uh, in this relation goes with every single real numbered y. This is super duper not a function. All right, thanks for watching.